Welcome back to another episode of Building the EMG-6. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the tubes that transition from the forward gearbox to the forward seat, and these tubes simultaneously intersect through the passenger rudder pedal support tube. The frame construction that you have completed to date is shown in green, and the new tubes that we're going to be installing are shown in red. Looking at the 3D model, we will look at the orientation of each tube in relationship to the rest of the frame. First, we will look at the passenger rudder pedal support tube. This is part number 53-10-09-72. This end of the tube has a through hole that will be used to insert the bushings for the seat belt attached location. It also is offset slightly from the pilot's seat to the forward gearbox tubes. On the other end of the tube, there is a through hole for the tube that runs from the forward gearbox to the pilot's forward seat section. Note that this hole is not exactly 90 degrees to the passenger rudder pedal support tube. However, it's close enough that during the cutting of this, you can drill completely through it and then simply clean it up with a die grinder once you've got it finished. Next, we will look at 53-10-09-73. And this tube is the forward pilot seat to gearbox. If we start at the top, it is easy to identify proper orientation for this particular tube. The tube cutout fits evenly along the baseline of the pilot's side seat tubes. Both the left and right tubes are nearly identical and could be swapped and positioned in either side. On the bottom of this tube, there is a cutout that allows for the tube from the forward seat to the forward landing gear box to intersect. The reference drawings for cutting out these tubes are 53-10-09-73. That is the forward pilot seat to gear box. And then the next tube is 53-10-09-72 rudder pedal support tube. Before we can fit any of the tubes to the fuselage, it's important to place the pilot seat positioning fixture back into the frame to position the forward section of the pilot seat. As oftentimes happens during the welding process, some movement of the tubes that are not triangulated yet occurs. This is from the heating and cooling differentially around each weld. You can see how the pilot seat has moved away from its proper position within the fixture. This generally is not a really big problem, we simply need to clamp the tube back into the fixture before we start the cutting, fitting, and welding of any of the tubes. The next step is to position both of the tubes using fixture 53-10-08. This will provide exact location for the placement of both tubes simultaneously. At this time, if there's any areas around the tube that interfere with the proper positioning of the tubes, we need to simply take a die grinder and make some minor adjustments to ensure a proper fit. Additionally, we need to think about any vent holes that may need to be drilled in the tubes before we finalize the welding. Once we're satisfied with the fit of these tubes and the welding fixture, we secure everything in place. In this case, we simply use some vinyl tape to attach both the fixture and the tubes to the existing frame. In case you have any questions about the joints or the fits of the tube, let's do a quick walk around to get an idea of what each end of the tube should look like. This is an overview look of the tubes as they're held in place. Next we will zoom in to see the forward end of the seat to gearbox tube, part number 53-10-09-72 and another look from the side. And next, the bottom end of the tube. And you can see just a bit too much grinding on the very end. This is the upper end of 53-10-09-73. And a look at this tube as it's held in place by the wooden fixture. And another look at the intersection of the two tubes. Now that we've shown you what the position of each of these tubes looked like, it's time to tack weld each one of the welds with a fairly significant size weld.
Now that we've completed the tack welding on the left side of the fuselage, we can go ahead and duplicate the process for the right side, setting up the fixture the same way, and then tack welding the rest of the frame. Once we've completed that, we can go ahead and remove the seat positioning fixture and the passenger rudder pedal support tube fixture. This will make access to the rest of the structure relatively easy so that we may finish up the welding process. Now it's time to go ahead and add any vent holes into the frame before we start closing off the welds. One of the nicer aspects of working with a fuselage frame of this size is that it weighs less than 20 pounds. In this configuration, the frame makes it easy to maneuver and repositioning so that your welding takes place in a much more comfortable position. We use a small metal table with a vise that has a rotating head that we can use to clamp the fuselage to, or even clamp a supporting fixture into the vise so that we can rest our hand during the welding process. We clamp the grounding clamp to the table, which is all metal, and then as long as the frame is making good contact with the table, we're not having to co constantly reposition the ground clamp. Well, we have come to the end of another episode of Building the EMG-6. If you are one of the builders that use these videos, or are simply one of the many interested viewers that enjoy watching our progress, we hope you find these videos helpful and insightful. Please remember to like us on the YouTube page and continue to share these videos with your friends.